Benjamin Franklin, January 17, 1706, Old Style Calendar, January 6, 1705, to April 17, 1790, was one of the founding fathers of the United States of America. A noted polymath, Franklin was a leading author and printer, satirist, political theorist, politician, scientist, inventor, civic activist, statesman, and diplomat. As a scientist, he was a major figure in the Enlightenment and the history of physics for his discoveries and theories regarding electricity. He invented the lightning rod, bifocals, the Franklin stove, a carriage odometer, and a musical instrument. He formed both the first public lending library in America and the first fire department in Pennsylvania. He was an early proponent of colonial unity, and as a political writer and activist, he, more than anyone, invented the idea of an American nation. And as a diplomat during the American Revolution, he secured the French alliance that helped to make independence possible. Franklin is credited as being foundational to the roots of American values and character, a marriage of the practical and democratic Puritan values of thrift, hard work, education, community spirit, self-governing institutions, and the opposition to authoritarianism, both political and religious, with the scientific and tolerant values of the Enlightenment. In the words of Henry Steele Commager, in Franklin could be merged the virtues of Puritanism without its defects, the illumination of the Enlightenment without its heat. To Walter Isaacson, this makes Franklin the most accomplished American of his age and the most influential in inventing the type of society America would become. Born in Boston, Massachusetts, Franklin learned printing from his older brother and became a newspaper editor, printer, and merchant in Philadelphia, becoming very wealthy, writing and publishing Poor Richard's Almanac and the Pennsylvania Gazette. Franklin was interested in science and technology and gained international renown for his famous experiments. He played a major role in establishing the University of Pennsylvania and Franklin and Marshall College and was elected the first president of the American Philosophical Society. Franklin became a national hero in America when he spearheaded the effort to have Parliament repeal the unpopular Stamp Act. An accomplished diplomat, he was widely admired among the French as American minister to Paris and was a major figure in the development of positive Franco-American relations. From 1775 to 1776, Franklin was postmaster general under the Continental Congress and from 1785 to 1788 was president of the Supreme Executive Council of Pennsylvania. Toward the end of his life, he became one of the most prominent abolitionists. Franklin's colorful life and legacy of scientific and political achievement, and status as one of America's most influential founding fathers, has seen Franklin honored on coinage and money, warships, the names of many towns, counties, educational institutions, namesakes, and companies, and more than two centuries after his death, countless cultural references. Ancestry Franklin's father, Josiah Franklin, was born at Acton, Northamptonshire, England, on December 23, 1657, the son of Thomas Franklin, a blacksmith and farmer, and Jane White. His mother, Albia Folger, was born in Nantucket, Massachusetts, on August 15, 1667, to Peter Folger, a miller and schoolteacher, and his wife, Mary Morrill, a former indentured servant. A descendant of the Folgers, J. A. Folger founded Folger's Coffee in the 19th century. Josiah Franklin had 17 children by his two wives. His first wife was Anne Child, whom he married about 1677 in Acton and immigrated to Boston with in 1683. They had three children before immigrating and four after. After her death, Josiah was married to Abia Folger on July 9, 1689, in the Old South Meeting House by Sam Willard. Benjamin, their eighth child, was Josiah Franklin's fifteenth child and tenth and last son. Josiah Franklin converted to the Puritan Church in the 1670s. Puritanism was a Protestant movement in England to, quote, purify Anglicism from the elements of the Roman Catholic religion, which they considered superstitious. 
three things were important to the Puritans, that each congregation would be self-governing, that ministers gave sermons instead of performing rituals such as the Mass, and individual Bible studies so that each believer could develop a personal understanding and relationship with God. Puritanism appealed to smart middle-class people, such as Benjamin Franklin's father, who enjoyed the governance meetings, discussion, study, and personal independence. The roots of American democracy can be seen in these Puritan values of self-government, the importance of the individual, and rebellion against authority, which were passed on to Benjamin Franklin and other founding fathers, such as John Adams. One of Josiah's core Puritan values was that personal worth is earned through hard work, which makes the industrious man the equal of kings, which Ben Franklin etched onto his father's tombstone. From his father Josiah's favorite Bible quote from the Hebrew Bible, Proverbs 22, verse 29, Seeth thou a man diligent in his calling, he shall stand before kings. Hard work and equality were two Puritan values Ben Franklin preached throughout his life and spread widely through poor Richard's almanac and his autobiography. Ben Franklin's mother, Abia Folger, was born into a Puritan family that was among the first pilgrims to flee Massachusetts for religious freedom when King Charles I of England began persecuting Protestants. They sailed for Boston in 1635. Her father was a sort of rebel destined to transform colonial America. As a clerk of the court, he was jailed for disobeying the local magistrate in defense of middle-class shopkeepers and artisans in conflict with wealthy landowners. Ben Franklin followed in his grandfather's footsteps in Ben's battles against the wealthy Penn family that owned the colony of Pennsylvania. Early Life Benjamin Franklin was born on Milk Street in Boston on January 17, 1706, and baptized at Old South Meeting House. His father, Josiah Franklin, was a tallow chandler, a maker of candles and soap, whose second wife, Abia Folger, was Benjamin's mother. Josiah's marriages produced 17 children. Benjamin was the 15th child and youngest son. Josiah wanted Ben to attend school with the clergy, but only had enough money to send him to school for two years. He attended Boston Latin School, but did not graduate. He continued his education through voracious reading. Although his parents talked of the church as a career for Franklin, his schooling ended when he was ten. He then worked for his father for a time, and at twelve he became an apprentice to his brother James, a printer. When Ben was fifteen, James created the New England Courant the first truly independent newspaper in the colonies. When denied the option to write to the paper, Franklin invented the pseudonym of Mrs. Silence Doogood, who was ostensibly a middle-aged widow. The letters were published in the paper and became a subject of conversation around town. Neither James nor the Courant's readers were aware of the ruse. And James was unhappy with Ben when he discovered the popular correspondent was his younger brother. Franklin left his apprenticeship without permission and in doing so became a fugitive. At age 17, Franklin ran away to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, seeking a new start in a new city. When he first arrived, he worked in several printer shops around town. However, he was not satisfied by the immediate prospects. After a few months while working in a printing house, Franklin was convinced by Pennsylvania Governor Sir William Keith to go to London ostensibly to acquire the equipment necessary for establishing another newspaper in Philadelphia. Finding Keith's promises of backing a newspaper to be empty, Franklin worked as a compositor in a printer shop in what is now the Church of St. Bartholomew the Great in the Smithfield area of London. Following this, he returned to Philadelphia in 1726 with the help of a merchant named Thomas Denham, who gave Franklin a position as a clerk, shopkeeper, and bookkeeper in Denham's merchant business. In 1727, 21-year-old Benjamin Franklin created the Junto, a group of like-minded aspiring artisans and tradesmen who hoped to improve themselves while they improved their community. The Junto was a discussion group for issues of the day. It subsequently gave rise to many organizations in Philadelphia. Reading was a great pastime of the Junto, but books were rare and expensive. The members created a library and initially pulled their own books together. 
This did not work, however, and Franklin initiated the idea of a subscription library, where the members pooled their monetary resources to buy books. This idea was the birth of the library company, with the charter of the Library Company of Philadelphia created in 1731 by Franklin. Originally, the books were kept in the homes of the first librarians, but in 1739 the collection was moved to the second floor of the State House of Pennsylvania, now known as Independence Hall. In 1791, a new building was built specifically for the library. The library company flourished with no competition and gained many priceless collections from bibliophiles such as James Logan and his physician brother, William. The library company is now a great scholarly and research library, with a half a million rare books, pamphlets, and broadsides, more than 160,000 manuscripts, and 750,000 graphic items. Upon Denham's death, Franklin returned to his former trade. By 1730, Franklin had set up a printing house of his own and had contrived to become the publisher of a newspaper called the Pennsylvania Gazette. The Gazette gave Franklin a forum for agitation about a variety of local reforms and initiatives through printed essays and observations. Over time, his commentary, together with a great deal of savvy about cultivating a positive image of an industrious and intellectual young man, earned him a great deal of social respect. Though even after Franklin had achieved fame as a scientist and statesman, he habitually signed his letters with the unpretentious B. Franklin printer. In 1731, Franklin was initiated into the local Freemason Lodge, becoming a Grand Master in 1734, indicating his rapid rise to prominence in Pennsylvania. That same year, he edited and published the first Masonic book in the Americas, a reprint of James Anderson's Constitutions of the Freemasons. Franklin remained a Freemason throughout the rest of his life. Deborah Reed in 1724, while a boarder in the Reed home, Franklin had courted Deborah Reed before going to London at Governor Keith's request. At that time, Miss Reed's mother was wary of allowing her daughter to wed a 17-year-old who was on his way to London. Her own husband having recently died, Mrs. Reed declined Franklin's offer of marriage. While Franklin was in London, Deborah married a man named John Rogers. This proved to be a regrettable decision. Rogers shortly avoided his debts and prosecution by fleeing to Barbados, leaving Deborah behind. With Rogers' fate unknown and bigamy illegal, Deborah was not free to remarry. In 1730, Franklin acknowledged an illegitimate son named William, who would eventually become the last loyalist governor of New Jersey. While the identity of William's mother remains unknown, perhaps the responsibility of an infant child gave Franklin a reason to take up residence with Deborah Reed. William was raised in the Franklin household, but eventually broke with his father over the treatment of the colonies at the hands of the crown. However, he was not above using his father's fame to enhance his own standing. Franklin established a common law marriage with Deborah Reed on September 1, 1730. In addition to raising William, Benjamin and Deborah Franklin had two children together. The first, Francis Folger Franklin, born October 1732, died of smallpox in 1736. Sarah Franklin, nicknamed Sally, was born in 1743. She eventually married Richard Bach, had seven children, and cared for her father in his old age. Deborah's fear of the sea meant that she never accompanied Franklin on any of his extended trips to Europe, despite his repeated requests. However, Franklin did not leave London to visit Deborah even after she wrote to him in November 1769 saying her illness was due to dissatisfied distress because of his prolonged absence. Deborah Reed Franklin died of a stroke in 1774 while Benjamin was on an extended trip to England. Success as an author. In 1733, Franklin began to publish the famous Poor Richard's Almanac, with content both original and borrowed, under the pseudonym Richard Saunders, on which much of his popular reputation is based. Franklin frequently wrote under pseudonyms. Although it was no secret that Franklin was the author, his Richard Saunders character repeatedly denied it. 
poor Richard's proverbs, adages from this almanac, such as, A penny saved is two pence, dear, often misquoted as a penny saved is a penny earned. Fish and visitors stink in three days, remain common quotations in the modern world. Wisdom in folk society meant the ability to provide an apt adage for any occasion, and Franklin's readers became well prepared. He sold about 10,000 copies per year, a circulation equivalent to nearly three million today. In 1758, the year in which he ceased writing the almanac, he printed Father Abraham's Sermon, also known as The Way to Wealth. Franklin's autobiography, published after his death, has become one of the classics of the genre. His sayings, early to bed, early to rise, makes a man healthy, wealthy, and wise. They would sacrifice essential liberty to obtain temporary safety, deserve neither liberty nor safety.